uh, we have uh, Dr. Abumi's presentation. We will play it from our okay. end. How about now? We can play the presentation for you so that you can just speak. You'll have to stay next if it doesn't work. How about now? It's moving. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah, it is working. Now it's okay. moving. Yes, sir, it is moving. Please go ahead. Okay. This is, a, this is not a dropped syndrome. This is a young girl. She had the post-traumatic kyphosis after extirpation of the intermediary spinal cord tumor. But uh, this, the homity is flexible and the global spinal balance is not so bad. So we can manage this patient only cervical fixation, cervical correction like this. But, uh, no, it doesn't work. So, yeah. Okay, but um, if a patient has like the drop the syndrome, it's global spinal imbalance. They require recovery of global spinal imbalance. Okay, can you see? We have uh, two tools for the homotic correction in the cervical spine. One is cervical instrumentation, another is the destabilization by spinal osteotomy for rigid deformity. So we have many uh, cervical instrumentation, lateral screw, pedicle screw, laminar screw, and white screw like this. So, but uh, pedicle screw is the strongest. So pedicle, pedicle screw fixation provides greater product strength and instability for repetitive loading. So we can expect high capability of dehomity correction. This is a very good tool for dehomity correction of the dropped syndrome. So the uh, subcal pedicle screw had uh, the good stabilizing effect. We can, we can stabilize unstable cement, correction of the kyphosis, and the reconstruction of the cranial vertebral junction of the homity. Another tool is the uh, uh, osteotomy, cervical osteotomy. For the dropped syndrome, we can usually we can use two types of osteotomy. One is complete rejection, SPO. And another is uh, the PSO, particular subtraction osteotomy. This is a closing wedge osteotomy. But this is, can, we can use this only for cervical surgical junction. Yeah, Swiss Peterson osteotomy, SPO is a simple osteotomy. But uh, we have a risk of iatrogenic foramen stenosis by shortening of the posterior curve. We have to be careful. And the next is a pedicle subtraction osteotomy. This is more safe for uh, nerve root, but we can use this osteotomy only at the cervical surgical junction of C7 or T1. Bottom column rejection is more extensive osteotomy, but we seldom use this uh, osteotomy for the home take I have uh, the, uh, 20 case for the last 20 years and surgically managed to drop the syndrome. The gender is mostly the men, 13 men and seven women. At the age was 65.7 years in average. Nine patients were in their patient. And four patients had the post at the drop syndrome by post or post laminoplasty. Two was caused by rheumatoid arthritis and it was caused by post-traumatic parking, post-traumatic or Parkinson's uh, uh, syndrome. And the two cases had the ankylosing spondylitis. One case had remote arthritis. All patients complained horizontal gaze disturbance and 13 patients complained dysphagia and the four patients complained dysphonia and dysphonia. Eight patients had cervical myelopathy. In seven patients, dehomity progressed to chin on chest dehomity. The, regarding the osteotomy I did, 16 patients did posterior osteotomy alone. Uh, 14 patients had a uh, uh, Peterson osteotomy and two patients had a pelvic subtraction osteotomy. Two patients required a combined anterior and posterior osteotomy. Two patients with uh, flexible deformity 
required, is not required osteotomy. Regarding the instrumentation, I used surgical physical fixation of all patients. Fusion level was the C2 or C3, C4 down to T2 or T10 and 18 patients. Two patients required hospital surgical fixation. They had uh, Atlanta actual instability by rheumatoid arthritis. This is the overall, overall result. I would like to very uh, talk simply. All patients had a bone union, and the two patients require, require extension of fusion level uh, down to the mid or lower side surgical spine. And eight patients had a myelopathy preoperative, but uh, completely healed, healed in six patients. Two patients had uh, partially improved, not completely improved. We had a uh, several complications. Three patients had a uh, transient nerve root lesion by hydrogen chromium stenosis, C5 nerve root lesion two, and C8 nerve root lesion one patient. And uh, this uh, the nerve root complication was healed by foraminotomy in, in two patients, and uh, one patient had healed spontaneously. And uh, one patient uh, had a correction loss by C2 pedicling dislodement. This is a correction rate of kyphosic deomity, cyphosic deomity, kyphosis. The preoperative uh, 76 degree in average improved to 19 degree in average in the, at the final follow up. Uh, regarding the transposition of the loading axis, scroll plumb line. So the scroll plumb line, the plumb line from the external acoustic plumb. And all patients, uh, 14 patients had uh, uh, transfer to the anterior posterior of the segment. This is a good result. But uh, six patients had remained uh, removed, uh, improved, but remained at the anterior of the segment. Sorry, not the sternum, the segment. This is one case of a 78-year-old May. She had droplet syndrome, but HRG was unknown. She had a mild myopathy. So I did C67, C6, C3, C7, C6, laminectomy and uh, at, uh, SPO at uh, three level, C2 down T6 fixation. And uh, post operatively, this patient had uh, C5 nerve root palsy by other. So I did additional hormone for this patient and healed completely. You can see the spinal, global spinal balance you know, improved very well. This is a little bit a uh, problematic case. This patient had uh, uh, droplet syndrome at uh, cervical surgical kyphosis at very severe. You can see. Apex of the kyphosis uh, the upper surgical spine. But uh, this patient had a uh, muscle region, flexible. So I did uh, fixation from uh, uh, C2 down to uh, T3, to, uh, C3, T5. But the uh, apex of the kyphosis was maybe around the T4 or T5. So this uh, the fusion uh, level was not sufficient. We have to the more longer fixation must uh, must be done. So four months after the first surgery, and uh, this patient had a T6 uh, fracture, fracture at the T6, and uh, junctional uh, distal junctional kyphosis developed. So I did uh, fusion level down to T10, and we had a good result for this patient. You can see global spinal pulse has much improved. This is the ankylosing spondylitis by uh, case. This patient had chin chest deformity and kyphoscoliosis, young girl, young boy. I did uh, pedicular subtraction of osteotomy at C7. And I, I did osteotomy from posterior to anterior completely and correct the kyphosis. Yeah, you can see uh, cervical uh, kyphoscoliosis improves, not completely, but improves very well. This is another case of uh, the ankylosing spondylitis. This patient is also young, young male. 
And uh, you can see it uh, from the aposematic spine to down to the cerebrum completely fused by including spondylitis. So on the first step, I did uh, pedicle subtraction of theotomy out to C7 for question number cervicosotic kyphosis. This is okay. But uh, during the, the waiting with the next surgery of the lumbar osteotomy, she had uh, she held down and he had the fracture at T10, uh, 11 level. You can see this is a, uh, the extension of extension injury of the lower cervical uh, spine. But uh, and, uh, so we extend the fusion level down to the L1. But the skull problem will still remain as the anterior of the segment. So we need, we consider another, the, another osteotomy must be done. So finally, I did the L3 PSO for this patient. And see, so you can see uh, skull problem uh, improves the, uh, very well. And the C7 problem is on the segment. So in the L3 PSO, I did. 20, 22 degree of kyphosis correction. Fusion was extended to the second. We have to consider to decide surgical strategy, many factors. Many factors should be considered for selection of the compression and fusion level in breath shown surgery of the repeated syndrome. Why is the condition of spinal cord, nerve compression? Patient, they have a myopathy or head or not? And uh, we have to consider the GT of the cervical and thoracic spine. Location of prime line from the center uh, and uh, from the center of C7 and the external acoustic uh, foramen, we have to consider two prime line. And the name of kyphosis curve. And also we have to think about the global spinal balance. This is my surgical strategy for droplet syndrome. We have to consider C7 prime line and the scan from line and the global spinal balance. We divide the three types, type A in the type A and uh, C7 from line locate posterior of the sacrum and the uh, thoracic lumbar spine in the flexion like this. In these types, we, did, we can manage shorter fixation of the upper cervical, upper cervical spine to the, the upper cervical spine, little, uh, little bit shorter fixation. But if patient had type B uh, deformity, C7 prom line, locate anterior of the sacrum and the flexible sacrum bar spine. We need normal fixation for this type. In this patient, we extend the level to the middle uh, over the caudal of the middle cervical spine, apex of the kyphosis. And the third uh, type C is a more rigid case. And the uh, prime line, the anterior of the sacrum, and the rigid trochoramboid spine, like such as the uncloting spondylitis. We need the second stage surgery, the cervical or lumbar uh, osteotomy and the other osteotomy for this patient. Two, twice osteotomy we need, like this. So we, ha we have to think about the osteotomy procedure. We have a two approach, posteriorly only or combined anterior posteriorly. And the method of the osteotomy, SPO or PS, which is better to hold this patient. And the osteotomy level must be considered on apex of the carpus or more caudal. This is the model of uh, the tropet syndrome. And the apex of the carpus is C45. And the caudal end of carpus is C71. So if we need, we do, Correction of the cervical kyphosis by C45 osteotomy. And uh, correction of kyphosis is okay, but uh, transposition of the, trans of the loading axis is not sufficient. But if we do osteotomy at C7 T1 at the junction of the uh, cervical surgery, we can get more uh, good transposition of the prime line. For well, correction of the open syndrome, Fusion area must be different from ordinary cervical kyphosis. Restoration of cervical or global spinal balance is more important than correction of the kyphosis itself. Cranially, we require to C2, C3, or more cranial. Caudally, 
extended to upper thoracic spine mandate. And in some cases, required extension to middle lower thoracic spine, considering the previous operative C7 prime line, curve location, flexibility of the thoracic and lumbar spine, etc. All right. Surgical intervention for dropped syndrome caused by neuromuscular disorder has been considered difficult and usually non effective. However, sufficient correction can be provided by selected patient uh, by combined use of surgical osteotomy and strong instrumentation. Surgeon can choose osteotomy type of SPO or PSO and approach of posterior alone or combined anterior or posterior. Level of spinal osteotomy and length of instrumentation must be decided considering the deformity types and size and the global spinal balance. Uh, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.